This is Pranav Goa Thakurta from EduTV. Today we have a personality who is an authority in AI, a professor, a lawyer, former Pro Vice Chancellor. Yeah, he is none other than the famous Professor Madan Mohan Pan, popularly known as Professor M M Pan, Professor Pan. Professor Pan did his schooling from the famous St Joseph's High School, Allahabad. Post that he did his B.Sc. and M.Sc. from the prestigious Allahabad University, also popularly known as the Oxford of the East. He did his doctorate from IIT Roorkee. Professor Pant is promoting the ideation, development, and delivery of educational products, processes, and service for the next generation learning space in the post-internet, post-WTO world. In tune with the emerging knowledge economy, he is exploring the creation of quality knowledge, products, and ways of enhancing the productivity of knowledge workers. Drawing on his varied experience of over 40 years in research, teaching, administration, and managing government and private enterprises, he is now on designing and building systems that can meet the challenges of an inclusive education of high quality, Professor Pant has been associated with many educational organizations as a member of committee or working groups such as AICT, IMA, CBSC, CEC, EDSIL, ISA, Media Lab Asia, NCERT, NCTE, NIOS, NUEPA, UGC, and several and several universities. He has been closely linked with the IIT system, acquiring his PhD from IIT Rurki, having been a faculty member at IIT Kanpur and a member of the Board of Governors at IIT Delhi. His personal commitment is for enhancing human capital through personalized and inclusive education and transforming teacher training to foster the development of a professional group of independent educators. His contribution in this field are proposing new constructs such as learning metrics, learning kinetics, educational informatics to enhance learner motivation and the yearning to learn, learning to think, developing ways of monitoring epistemic development to achieve the required goals and outcomes. He's leading the formation of a new business landscape for education, having founded a very successful enterprise and encouraging several startups in finding their way in the new maze of educational opportunities. Today, the topic is the power of knowledge. I would request Professor Pant to educate and enrich us on the subject, the power of knowledge. The time right now is 11.05. Professor Pant will address us for 20 minutes by 11.25. Then we'll have a Q round. I know I'm trying to do impossible possible by putting a time frame on speaking for vice chancellor, lawyers, professors, and principals. I pray to God he should save me. So over to Mr. Pant, sir. So the... Uh... And more than seeing it is hearing, which is important. Yes. So anyway, uh, very good morning to Pranav and everybody else who's gathered here. Uh, the morning, theme sir. that I've chosen to speak about, share with you some ideas, is the theme of the power of knowledge. And uh, it is very interesting because uh, those of you who remember that Francis Bacon was one of the leading uh, philosophers and thinkers of, uh, yes, 400 years ago, and uh, I remember in school, we had read things like this, that reading make it a full man, writing make it an uh, exact man, and conversation make it a ready man. And uh, there's the even more important uh, quotation due to him, somewhere in uh, early 1600 something, called knowledge is power. And this is very interesting because then many other people said that. In fact, uh, Ralph Emerson had a thing that any knowledge is power. Uh, we have had this thing with education because for Indira Gandhi University, the tagline was education is a liberating force. Education can also be a subjugating force. I mean, you know very often that uh, denial of knowledge or letting people not have access to knowledge is a very important thing. Uh, knowledge asymmetry is something which allows people to exert a lot of power on that. But what is more interesting is while all this was said 400 years ago, uh, Peter Drucker, around 1960, started observing changes in the world. Uh, till then, uh, workers were basically classified as blue-collar workers, those who worked in factory lower jobs, 
and white collar workers, those who were the kind of office staff, managerial staff, and so on. And around 1960, Peter Drucker in a book coined the term knowledge worker. And even within the white collar worker, he said workers who depend upon their knowledge as the key asset are important and will continue to be more important. And this is where I want to draw my story from. So what we are saying is we are now, you must have heard this very often, we are now in a knowledge economy, we are now in an innovation economy. And uh, therefore, the importance of knowledge is going to become even more interesting. Uh, even traditionally, there's a very interesting uh, shlok in Sanskrit, which says that scholarship and kingship can never be compared. And he says, a king is honored only in his own country, where a scholar is honored everywhere. It says, Swadeshe Pujyate Raja Vidwan Sarvatra Pujyate. Now, the point is that we have been uh, looking at this. My own background, as uh, Pranay has told you, has been a scientific researcher, especially in physics, theoretical physics. So we, of course, were all well-tuned periodism, then phenomenology, then go on to ab initio understanding, and so on. But what I was surprised was that in the rest of the education world, nobody talks about knowledge, except those who are studying philosophy, and maybe they study epistemology and philosophy. Uh, nobody else is done. Why? Everybody is being given knowledge. The interesting thing, which was uh, uh, the eye opener for me was that when I met some people in the International Baccalaureate Organization, I was once in a conference in UNESCO with the vice chairman of that IBU organization. And I learned that IV has a thing called the theory of knowledge. And this was a very interesting thing. So I have always been trying to say that uh, I've been a great admirer of the theory of knowledge course. I've seen the content, I've seen the book. Uh, they gave a very nice popular book as part of the course called Sophie's World, which has sold it to millions of copies all over the world uh, and is a very quick thing on philosophy for 16 year old. But the important point was that I was not able to understand why no board in India, CBSE, state boards, all these kind of things uh, could do something equivalent of theory of knowledge. Because when they teach theory of knowledge, apart from teaching that what you might call epistemology and philosophy, every subject they see the linkage of it. When you study physics, you say, what is the connection between physics and theory of knowledge? When you study chemistry, what is the connection between chemistry and theory of knowledge? When you study maths, what is the connection between maths and theory of knowledge? But what is amazing is that the entire journey of school, college, university education, except for those narrow who, as I said, are doing science or philosophy or something, that exposition is not done. And now as we enter the age of knowledge and innovation economy, to me, this becomes very, very significant and important. And this is what I really wanted to draw attention to. Uh, I'm sure many of you would be knowing that your colleagues who teach in the IB platform, that in theory of knowledge, they talk about ways of knowing. How do we get knowledge? So it can be from authority, from direct experience, from various things. Then they talk about areas of knowledge. And it is very interesting that the IB in 2014 augmented its pool of areas of knowledge with the religious knowledge as well as indigenous knowledge. Then, of course, factors that talk about individual knowledge, collective knowledge, knowledge in the community, all these things become somewhat very interesting and important. So what I am trying to say is that now we are in the era of artificial intelligence. In school, uh, in CBS is created a course on class 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, everything. But where is the understanding of how do different subjects relate to each other? And in fact, AI has been called as a skill thing rather than as a knowledge thing, whereas it is much more about knowledge, it is about intelligence, it is about mimicking intelligence, but it has been treated at the same level of a scale as, I don't know, carpentry, bookkeeping, whatever, whatever. The, the point I'm trying to make is that as we move into a new world, everybody has heard this term called VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, and the only answer is having the knowledge to deal with unknown stuff. And therefore, knowledge becomes very, very critical. And especially when we talk about uh, emerging areas, so now you're, let us say, you're saying self-driving cars. So you need to acquire knowledge about self-driving cars and understand how this is structured, how the relationship of the... Some time ago, there was a big movement about mind maps in school. We're talking about concepts and how they're related to each other. 
But somehow we are back to rote learning and preparing for IIT exam. And the idea of understanding or knowledge or connections of concepts has almost gone away. What I'm trying to draw attention to is that it is very important for us to rekindle this. And there's a very good opportunity. The opportunity comes because in the immediate past, we have seen that such Zoom meetings, online learning, people are using WebEx or Skype or Zoom or Google Hangout or whatever. And of course, I am a promoter of WhatsApp. So my preferred medium of learning is through WhatsApp. But whatever it be, we today have an option and a possibility for enlightened, forward-looking schools to be able to bring something like this to their students. And I don't want you to copy theory of knowledge because I'm not promoting IB per se, but I'm promoting the idea that school children understand knowledge. And I have therefore coined uh, terminology and I'm happy to have it improved. So I'm saying we need to have a course which talks about knowledge, its nature, the representation, organization, and management. So the acronym for it will be KINROM, K-I-N-R-O-M. We can look for a better name later on. But the point is that if you don't understand what is the nature of knowledge, what is true knowledge, what is fake, we are all talking today of fake news, fake this, etc. But first thing we have to understand that what are we talking of? So what is science and why is the scientific method better than science? But that doesn't mean that things which cannot be explained scientific are not true. Only it means till date we don't have a scientific explanation for it. And I want to spend some time elaborating these things. So I will begin with a very simple thing, the representation of knowledge. Now, this is something which is very fundamental to all things that are happening. If you want to train people in whatever you want to train them in AI or robotics, et cetera, et cetera, the first thing you need to understand is knowledge representation. And I'm not saying this uh, uh, as a whimsical thing, I, actually, I. I can quote to you from page three of Introduction to Deep Learning by Ian Goodfellow, Yeshua Benjo, and Arun Purvil. This is one of the standard textbooks on deep learning. It says, the dependence on representations is a general phenomena that appears throughout computer science and even in daily life. How you represent things is a very good starting point. I will tell you something very simple to appreciate that. We all, let us assume that the average distance of the Earth to the sun is 93 million miles and the speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. So how much time does light take to come from the surface of the sun to the surface of the earth? I am saying surface of the sun to the surface of the earth because inside the sun itself it takes a lot of time and takes several years to happen. Eh? So 93 million miles divided by 186,000 miles per second. Many of you may remember it from your school days it is about eight minutes. But if you divide 93 million by 186,000, you know it is one upon two, so it is 0. 0.5 thousand, and therefore 500, and 500 seconds is eight minutes and 20 seconds. Very good, we did this easily. Now suppose, instead of using this system, which you can call the Arabic system or the Indian system, I ask you to do this using the Roman system. You know in school you write class five as V, class six as V and I, Class four as I before V. So use the Roman system and 10 is X and try to write 93 million. And then try to write 186,000 and then try to divide the two. You will never be able to do it. Because first you won't be able to write it. Secondly, you won't be able to divide it because there is no division in Roman arithmetic. Roman arithmetic, you have to keep on subtracting 500 times. If you could write it in Roman, Subtract in Roman, you would have to subtract 500 times in Roman to get the answer. They don't have zero. There is no class zero in school. It is kg, upper kg, lower kg, then it is class one. There is no class zero. Now the point that I'm trying to make is, just because we had this representation, we could do so much in astronomy. We were able to predict the elliptical orbits. Even today we can tell you, who Amavasya hai, Purmasi hai, Ekadashi hai, based on calculations which are thousands of years old. This is very important. And I'm saying this again and again, because how you represent your initial data or information is critical to what you can do with it. And as many of you know, 
once we started using computers, we did not even go that far up to 10. We just used zero and one. And we had zero and one and computers doing binary arithmetic and we could do this faster than. Many of you would be surprised to know that in adopting the decimal system, we were way ahead of the British and the US has still not adopted decimal system for everything. And the British adopted it something like 25 years after we had done it. The decimal system made it much easier to calculate. And so now I will do one more quick uh, teaser with you. So what is one and a half into one and a half? Now, most of you will find it difficult to do that multiplication, but some of you will be patient. Say one and a half is three upon two, three upon two into three upon two is nine upon four, and therefore it's still one upon four. Very good, took time, but you could do it. But suppose I said 1.5 into 1.5, you would have immediately said 2.25. Yes. Because you know 15 squared is 225, and therefore you put two decimal places, 2.25. This is the power of representation. And therefore, no matter what we are talking of, it is very important to look at alternative ways of representing it and which of them is functional for what purposes. And this to me is a very, very important aspect of what we want to say. And as I said, in computers, we could do this with bits and therefore that kind of thing. And of course, the future is that you go beyond this and instead of bits, use qubits to represent your data. And then you have quantum computers which can do things much faster. You might have heard that in October 2019, Google achieved quantum supremacy, where its computer calculated in 200 seconds something with the fastest supercomputer would have taken 10,000 years. So this is a very important aspect. And Greatness lies in thinking of new representation, not just repeating it. So I'll give you two, three examples of how, by merely just looking at things different way, the world was entirely changed. The first of them is that we believed, uh, and this was called the uh, Ptolemy model, that we believed that the sun moves on the earth. We teach this in school, I think. Sun rises in the east and sets in the west, and sun is moving north, and sun is moving south, and so on. But you know, it is not the sun that moves. It is the earth that moves. And this was called the Copernican revolution, where they said sun remains at the stationary and earth and all other planets move around it. This is just about 400 years ago. Till that time, most people believed that it's the earth, which is, which is called geocentric. So from geocentric, we move to heliocentric and so much difference happened in terms of explanation of how the planets move, what happens, how eclipses happen, and so on. The other very important thing is uh, relatively more recent. Uh, uh, Charles Darwin talked about the theory of evolution. 1859 or so was the book called Origin of Species. Until then, it was believed that God made each of us distinctly, a cat, a dog, a monkey, the plant, and the humans, and so on, so forth, elephants, etc., etc. But Darwin said, no, we have all evolved from the same set of things. And therefore, the flower and the animal and so on is part of the same evolutionary journey. They're evolving in different ways, but it is evolution, which is natural selection and whatever, and survival of the fittest. Darwin's theory does not talk about how life began. That's another field called ambiogenesis, etc., as to how life began. And now I think a lot of people will be interested about how life began because one virus is becoming stronger than 40 trillion human cells. But that's a different issue, it's called ambiogenesis. How the earth began is called the Big Bang theory. But that's a little away, but what Darwin said, and this was called, in fact, uh, till not too long ago, several uh, educational institutions in US were not allowed to teach Darwin's theory. The third very interesting thing, which is more recent, was done by Alfred Wegener, who talked about saying that this whole earth that we see as fixed and called terra firma, is actually a set of tectonic plates which is floating. And occasionally you see the, get the earthquake and so on and so forth. This was a sort of propounded in 1912, then in 1960, Now all knowledgeable people who are geologists such on, they believe in this tectonic plate and tectonic shift and so on and so forth. And the point is that in a similar sense, today we had climate change which half the people did not agree to that this is happening or this is consequential, is consequential upon human action, etc. Uh, so, uh, so now all that I want to say is that uh, 
Newton, who was credited with many of these things, had a very nice uh, phrase to sum up his life. So he was asked, so what do you think? How would you sum up your life? And he said, I do not know what I may appear to the rest of the world. But to myself, I am like a child on the seashore, looking now for a smoother pebble or a prettier shell, where the whole ocean of truth lay undiscovered before me. The goal of an education has to be to get people to start seeking truth. There's a whole ocean of truth which is undiscovered. We said only in a few years and what we are going to see and so on. And therefore, it is very important that instead of getting people to be able to give the right answers to questions, they start questioning the answers. They start looking at things in different way. And this was said by uh, Alvin Toffler in 1980s. Many of you must have heard this quotation. It has been quoted umpteen times. Uh, Alvin Toffler was again trying to argue with Francis Bacon, because Francis Bacon had emphasized reading and writing and conversation. And Alvin Toffler said, the illiterates of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Correct. And this is called learning agility. And this is where I want to kind of close because from, uh, I said 1125, and I think it is about to be 1125. I think this is what we must encourage. We must encourage people to appreciate knowledge and to continually keep adding to their knowledge. And of course, as I said, revising and updating knowledge because things that were true at one point of time are no longer true at a later time. I'll conclude by just quoting about Alexander. It is said that when Alexander the Great had conquered the whole world, he was very disappointed. He said, what do I do next? The whole world has been conquered. I have nothing more to do. At that time, going to the moon or Mars or Jupiter was not possible. But when you explore knowledge, this never happens. The, as the Newton said, the ocean of truth lies undiscovered before ourselves. There is no limits to human knowledge as yet. There may be that as of now, what we know is maybe. That also is now continually growing. And therefore, the whole appeal that I want to do is to take serious interest in developing this part. And this can be done concurrently with what you're doing. I'm not saying uh, this versus that. I'm saying this in addition to that. So you need to know what is. So this is, again, uh, Newton has a very famous quote on this. Newton said, if I have been able to see other uh, further than others, and he wrote this to Robert Hooke. And he said, if I've been able to see further than others, it is because I stood on the shoulders of giants. So whatever people that we can get on which we can build to be able to see further, let us do that and continue exploring knowledge. So with that, I will stop this part. I'm very happy to engage with questions, answers, supplementaries, and so on. Uh, hopefully, Pranav, I've kept to your time. Oh, so no. your time schedule is not disturbed. Your time is impeccable always, sir. Now, uh, before we start for the questions, can we have a quick attendance, please? Uh, Ms. Sunaina Gupta, Principal Sahaj International School. Present. Mr. Swaminathan, Principal, DPS, Uganda. Present, sir. Madam Jayashri Bhargav from Satyug School, Faridabad. Sir Ravi Govil. Yes, sir. Present. Ms. Anupama from Bal Bharti, Noida. Present, sir. Mr. G.C. Tripathi, Cider International, Bangladesh. Present. Pandana Seth from Sanford. Ms. Jyoti Aroda from Mount Abu. Present. Ms. Anupama from Bangalore. Present. Anupama, too. <laughs> Present. Uh, Ms. Anju Mehrotra, Motor Kalka Public School. Yes, sir. Present. Uh, Raj uh, Biswal, DAV. Present. Regards, sir. Okay. okay. All the best. Mr. Missal. We can't hear that. We can't hear anyway. Pooja Bol, Iron School. Present, sir. Regards to Professor Pant. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Richa Singh. Present, sir. Thanks so much. Thank Mr. S.K. Rathor, Promoter, Sanford Schools. Yeah, good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, good Dr. morning. Sir. Yeah, nice, you. To, nice to uh, listen to you. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Murkati Mehdi. Present, sir. Present, sir. And regards Dr. to... Uh, Dr. Thank, Dr. thank you. Thank you. Yes, you have missed me. Dr. Seema Negi, Mumbai. Hi, Dr. How can they miss you? How <laughs> can you miss her? <laughs> I always ensure that I am there when Pansar is there. Oh. I try not, not to miss any of his sessions. Yes, great, 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 great. Yes, good morning everyone. Good morning. School. Yeah. I missed out the present, sir. Present, Pranav, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? Jaitri Pandev. You would like to ask one question. How was the session by Professor Pan? Stupendous. 
मिश्र त्रिपाठी एक्सेलेंट अनुपमा अपार्ट फ्रॉम वैनिटी मैट्रिक्स वेरी इंफॉर्मेटिव वंदना सेठ विंडोफुल एज एवर लाइटनिंग वेरी लाइटनिंग अनुपमा टू कुड बी बेटर देन दैट जयश्री अ लॉट ऑफ फूड फॉर थॉट रश्मि राज कॉलेजेबल ज्योति अरोड़ा हाईली एनरिचिंग रिचा सिंह या इट वाज ऑसम ऑसम सेशन द रवि लर्निंग मिस्टर मुर्तकी मेहदी मेहदी साहब स्वामी स्वामी नाथन इट वाज अ स्टेलर सेशन तानिया सिंधु एनरिचिंग अंजु मैम thoughtful and enlightening anupama again yes anupama reflecting reflective and introspective was was refreshing it was educative and it was as if you know it, uh, we we relearn and unlearned and relearned yeah um, yes. it it Sir. was informative useful productive hmm. interesting what seema yes so everybody has given all the adjectives and good words so uh, <laughs> starting from the first one to the last one including everything and superlative <laughs> oh wow i would like to thank uh, professor pan and the whole august gathering of all principals and educationists thank you so much we'll be here tomorrow again with our program for school leaders thank you thank you so much thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so you. much thank you, thank you, thank you, you. Pranav sir thank you, thank you thanya thank, thank you professor pan thank you for yeah, an yeah. amazing session bye, bye. Thank, thank you thank you for an amazing bye. session and you'll see the video bye, tomorrow bye. before you yes thank you bye okay bye thank bye. you